So some things to consider when you're really talking about market sophistication is start with segmenting your messaging and your population. So I like to give a lot of messaging around. I don't spend a ton of time on problem unaware people because those are really hard people. Welcome back to the Female Empowered Podcast, the podcast dedicated to empowering and inspiring female business owners in boutique healthcare, wellness, and fitness. I'm so glad to be here. I'm your host, Krista Gurka. And today I have another exciting episode. To me, they're all exciting. But what I'm going to be talking about today is a t- concept that we call market sophistication. Okay. And if you have no idea what it is, don't worry. I didn't know what it was until I had been in business probably for 10 years. And I had never heard that term before. But basically, we're going to be diving into the topic of meeting your client where they are at in your marketing. So in your advertising, in your messaging, it's all about meeting customers where they are and tail- tailoring you are messaging and your marketing strategies accordingly so that you can make the most of your messaging and really get them to be able to say, oh my gosh, that's exactly how I feel. You're in my head or yes, this is exactly what I need. Okay. So it is an important concept to understand. And I think it's something that as we start to unravel other businesses, marketing plans in our mentorship groups, this is really where it's it's really eye-opening because oftentimes, and this still happens with me too. It's just happened in, in one of my coaching calls with my mentor, my marketing mentor the other day, who happens to be Claire Pels, Claire Pelletro on her Get Paid Marketing group. She said something to me while I was talking about the problems and the messages. And she said, Let that, that's the problem. But do they know that's the problem? Do your customers know that's the problem? Do your clients, your patients know that's their problem? And so it's the same thing we do with the people in our group. Sometimes they're like, oh, the problem is that their hamstring is weak on that side. You know that, but do they know that? So if you're using that in your messaging, it's not going to resonate with them. Okay. So let's start by defining what market sophistication actually is. And what does it mean in the context of marketing and marketing strategy? Okay. What it refers to is the collective knowledge, the awareness, the familiarity your target audience has with your specific service, or maybe your specific product, if you're selling a product, okay? It ranges from like a very low level understanding to a high level of sophistication, okay? And by understanding where your people are on the spectrum, you can tailor your messaging directly to them so that it really resonates with them. Because if you're talking about, let me give you an example, because this is a business podcast, right? So if I'm talking about how to set up an LLC, the people that are $500,000 in business are going to be like, I'm off of that. I'm way beyond that. That message isn't going to resonate with them. All right. Now, if I talk about Let me think of what I can talk about. If I can talk about scalability and selling your business for 750 or 800,000 or a million dollars, that's not necessarily going to resonate with people that are just starting out. Okay. So we talk about market sophistication on a spectrum. All right. On a spectrum from low understanding um, to high understanding. And so where we talk about with them is that the levels that I talk about frequently are problem unaware. So these people are unaware that they actually have a problem. So let me give you an example of, I'll give you two examples. An example, maybe in the pelvic health market, incontinence, let's just say incontinence. Somebody might know that they are a little bit incontinent and they have urge to go to the bathroom all the time, but they don't know that's a problem. Those people are problem unaware. Maybe they think that's normal and everyone does that. Or maybe their doctor told them that. So they don't understand that's actually a problem. In business, if you're like, I'm doing all the things and I'm just burnt out, you may not think that's actually a problem because you may think that's normal. You may say, oh, this is how everyone runs their business, right? No, that's not how everyone runs their business. Okay. And successful people know that's not how to run their business. All right. So you have problem unaware. 
Then you have problem aware. So let's take that same person in business. You're like, dude, there's got to be a fucking better way to do this. This is a problem. I am unhappy. I am miserable. I'm not getting anything done. But you don't know what the solution is. You don't know why it's a problem, why you're burnt out, why, what the solution is to get you to the other side. All right. And then you have people that are solution aware. Solution aware people know that there is a solution. What you're trying to tell them is that you are the right solution to their problem. So let's take, for example, let's go back to the pelvic health example. So maybe these people actually finally get to solution aware. So they understand that leaking is a problem. They know that there's a solution for it. They just don't know that you're the solution for it. So there's a variety of solutions for that. There's surgery, number one, right? There are, if you go to the women's health aisle in the grocery store, there's every type of pad ever. There are people that just tell you to do key goals. So there's a variety of solutions. So what your messaging should be is that why you are the solution to their problem. Okay. So a lot of times, this is again, why I'm a big proponent of market research and surveying, polling your customers, right? So you can get a good understanding in their own words, what their needs, desires, and pain points are not their, well, their needs are their wants. Okay. So basically what are their needs? Their needs are, I want to stop having to go to the bathroom every five minutes, or I want to stop having to buy special underwear or leak during the day. That's what they want. Okay. It helps you really understand a deeper level of understanding about your industry and about what your customers and clients ultimately are searching for. Okay. Another great way to do this, which I do this oftentimes, is look at the messaging some of your competitors are putting out there. Because if they're being successful, then you know that their messaging is hitting somehow. Okay. You can do this on Facebook by looking up what ads some of your competitors are doing. You can see this. You can go into their page transparency on Facebook and see what kind of ads are they running? What kind of messaging are they using? Now, I'm not saying go in there and copy. I'm just saying, oh, they're talking about this. This must be really successful for them. You can go on their Instagram pages. You can see what polls and stuff get the most engagement. And then you can just say, oh, I'm analyzing their marketing efforts. This seems to be what's working for them. And maybe it helps you align with either go in the same direction, or you can set yourself apart by going in a different direction. All right. So by monitoring what's working in the landscape and in the, in that industry can be very helpful. All right identifying how they communicate with their target audience, you can gain insights into how you should communicate with your target audience, either by leaning into it or leaning away from it, okay? I also listen. I listen a lot to what clients talk about in the studio. I listen a lot to what clients talk about online. What are their biggest fears? What are their biggest wants and needs? Why did they choose us to come work with, okay? So, it becomes very helpful when I'm putting messaging out there. What is it that they're really looking for that's going to get them to come in, okay? And all I really want them to do is book an intro session, come in one time, and then the rest is on us to retain them as clients, okay? So some things to consider when you're really talking about market sophistication is Start with segmenting your messaging and your population. So I like to give a lot of messaging around. I don't spend a ton of time on problem unaware people because those are really hard people to convert. It's really hard. You are oftentimes that the timeline is much longer. And so even though I will spend some time there, I won't spend a lot of time there. Those are not my ideal buyers, especially for a high ticket offer like phys- cash-based physical therapy or Pilates, okay? I spend a lot of time in the problem-aware and solution-aware categories. I see much better return on my investment there. And so this is how I start to design and develop my educational content. I focus on educational content that's going to lead them from saying, okay, I know that I have a problem now to 
Pilates in the Grove or Krista Gurkha is the solution to my problem. I use simple language. We talk about fifth grade language, okay? And examples to help them understand what your value is, what you as the service, what kind of value and transformation can you provide for them? Let me give you an example from a business perspective. So if I'm talking to business owners, I can use tips like, Five tips every successful female founder knows to generate $500,000 in revenue. Now, that's going to entice people that are at $400,000 in revenue. And it might also entice people that are at $50,000 in revenue that their goal is to get to $500,000. So I've hit that whole spectrum there because it's going to resonate with people that are more at the beginning, right? But they want to get over here. And then people that are already at four, 300 or 400,000. So I hit both people on that spectrum. Okay. Now, another way that you want to segment your population and work with the different problem aware, solution aware people is how can you demonstrate your expertise? It really builds credibility and trust. We talk about this all the time in marketing, no in trust factor. So how are you building expertise? You can be using testimonials. You can be doing videos, okay? You can just be showing people why you're different than the competition. I'll give you a perfect example. I just created a, I think a reel or a video for Pilates in the Grove that talks about rib flare, okay? Most people here are practitioners, so I can use that term rib flare. Um, it's a big thing in fitness now, right? Oh, rib flare is bad. Rib flare, maybe not. But what I did for my population, for the consumer was I took a video of what rib flare looks like, right? Because they can identify that, right? They're like, oh yeah, that's what my ribs look like. Or my Pilates instructor, my PT is always telling me pull my ribs in, okay? And then I went into an explanation of what that actually means, okay? Then I gave them an example of what they might not get, which is a lot of times people are just like, drop your ribs. But what I explained was in order to truly be able to drop your ribs, and I'm using this in quotes, drop your ribs, because not everyone needs that. You have to open up the back part of your rib cage. If you can't open up and behind, you can't get that back. And sometimes rib flare comes from, I'm going to go down the rabbit hole of my biomechanics now. Sometimes the rib flare comes from the anterior pelvic tilt. So if your pelvis is tilted anteriorly, maybe your ribs have to flare to keep you in your horizon, okay? And then what has to happen at the upper chain, the upper back has to go into a little bit of kyphosis. So it's multi-planar, it's not one dimension. So that is gonna help Pilates in the Grove build credibility and establish trust because they're like, ooh, damn, this girl really knows what she's talking about. Nobody else has explained my rib flare to me in this way. But I'm going to do it in terms, I'm not going to talk to them about, oh, rib flare and then anterior pelvic tilt, which really pulls this forward, which is going to, I'm not going to talk to them in that language. They're like, all they hear is wah, 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 wah. I'm going to use pictures. I'm going to use fifth grade language that if your ribs push forward in the front, what you really need is to give your, the back part of your body more room. So the ribs could shift in both directions. Easy, simple language. Okay. Another thing for market sophistication that you want to consider is to different, differentiate yourself from the competition. So let's go back to that example where I said, analyze your competitors' messaging and marketing. So if everyone's talking about Kegels, right, maybe you can talk about how Kegels are not right for everybody. So you're going to differentiate yourself from that, okay? Maybe if people are... Maybe if you want people that are really, you're really into like holistic treatment and meditation and self-care, lean into that in your messaging. So for me, for example, I'm like a no-nonsense business coach. I'm very truthful. I'm very transparent. I can sometimes come across as aggressive to some people. So in my messaging, I talk about that. If you are offended by people calling you out on your bullshit sometimes or the fact that you're not doing the work, I am not going to be the right coach for you. If you don't like cursing, I am not going to be the right coach for you because I curse a lot, <laughs> okay? Now, that's not to say that I'm going to build rapport with people and I am credible. The information that I have, the knowledge that I have is useful and beneficial. It's just my delivery in that. Now, if you want something, someone that's more into coddling and holding your hand and taking time. That's great. There are a lot of coaches out there for that. It's just not going to be me. Okay. 
and highly sophisticated buyers, the people that are solution aware, know what they really want and are looking for differentiation. I don't get offended necessarily when someone is going to go work with another coach that's better suited for them. To be perfectly honest, it's better for me because we probably won't be successful together. Okay. Highly sophisticated, solution aware people are well versed in the market. Okay. They're the people that are like, they look at the sales page once and they're like, what's the option? What's the payment option? I'm just going to give you my money. That's me. Okay. When I go somewhere, I'm like, I either know I want to work with this person or I don't. I don't need to have a lot of time to think. Now, if something is like $50,000, yes, I'm going to think about it. But if something is between three and 10, and like I didn't think twice about re enrolling in Claire Pelletro's Get Paid Marketing Mastermind because I felt it was very valuable. So I did two rounds at it at $9,000 each round. So I paid her $18,000 for a year wor year's worth of training, okay? And I didn't hesitate that. I will also tell you, the people that nickel and dime you to get into your programs or that ask 2,055 questions are usually the people that give you the most headache once they get in. Now I'm not, I also just posted this on Instagram the other day. I don't fault people for wanting to speak to you or speak to me. I will schedule a discovery call with, anybody that is going to pay me for a one-on-one -on -one service or to my Fitbit Foundations program or Inner Circle. Like I, of course, you don't know me necessarily outside of what you're on social media or on my podcast. I will jump on a call for you. I'm also not going to pay a coach three to $5,000 just from a conversation in the DM and Instagram. Now I have sold that way before, but it's usually, I think, because people listen to my podcast or have spoken to me in some sense or message have interacted with me in real life at a conference or something. But I feel like people either know or they don't know. Like you either know what you want or you're not sure. Okay. And right now I'm in the process of connecting with people, not convincing them. Okay. I want to connect with you. I want you to feel like this, like you want to work with me. It's definitely like a hell yeah. And I understand that our high touch, our inner circle mastermind right now, mentorship is $12,000. I recognize that that's a lot of money. Yes, it is a lot of money. And I'm also super confident that the value far exceeds what people are going to pay if they are willing to do the work. Okay. The women in that group get four coaching calls with a variety of industry experts. They get one-on-one -on -one calls with me monthly if they want. They get all sorts of video trainings, including financial profit plans, including how to design your onboarding, recruiting and hiring process, how to design your SOP. They get access to in-person live retreats. And I know that at the end of their time with us, after spending $12,000, they will either have freed up a minimum of five hours a week on their schedule, okay, which is 20 hours a month, which if they charge $200 an hour, right? That's $4,000 over the course of a year. That's almost $50,000. Okay. Or they've been able to bring someone on their team, which doubles their revenue. So I am confident that the investment far is far outweighed by the value they receive. Okay. The other thing is, it's really like, instead of going on Google and being like, oh, is this for me? Is this not for me? They just type it into our Facebook group. And I'm like, here's what, how I feel. And here are the pros and cons to that. And this is what you should consider. Okay. Market sophistication should be something that you think about. And I know it's hard. You're like, oh my God, I can barely figure out what I got to do today. And if that's the thought in your head, when you listen to these different strategies, then Investing in some business coaching could really be super, super beneficial for you to put some of that stress and overwhelm into perspective, channel your energy and your focus on certain things that are the most important to get done now versus doing all of the things now. Okay. And if you're sending out the wrong kind of messaging, that could be why you're not getting conversions. You're not getting people back in the door, right? Because the messaging isn't resonating with your audience. So I'm going to go back and just re review what we talk about when we're talking about market sophistication, okay? 
messaging should be geared around who you're marketing for. Are you marketing to the problem unaware people? And like I said, I don't spend a ton of time there because they're really hard to convert and I don't see a lot of return on my investment. Are you marketing to problem aware people or solution aware people? Okay, this is where I spend the majority of my time. And so your messaging needs to resonate with that. If they're problem aware, but not solution aware, okay, then you have to talk to them about that, recognize what their problem is and recognize what the solution is. Okay. Let me give you an example of that. People in business, especially women, especially people in the boutique fitness and healthcare and wellness industry, we, a lot of times were the practitioners when we started the business, we were the providers. We are the physical therapists. We are the Pilates instructors, the yoga instructors, the spin instructors, the personal trainers. We oftentimes don't have a lot of experience in business. So we go into this business, we're amazing practitioners, we have people coming in because we get good results with our clients, but we don't understand about social media or market sophistication or SEO or returning emails or automations. And so when we start doing all of those other things, we feel burnt out. Now, what we think is the problem is that we're burnt out and we're like, we don't know what we're doing. We're in over our head. We don't have what it takes to make it. But no, the reason that you're burnt out is because you are doing too many of the wrong things and they deplete your energy. So what I do is I will explain to you why you're burnt out. You're burnt out because you're operating your business in survival mode. What you need, what the solution is to start operating your business from a thriving mode, which means delegating, putting things on the black back burner, planning, giving yourself time. And the solution for how to do that is to enroll in one of my mentorship programs. So I give you the step-by-step -step roadmap, okay? If I talk about the roadmap before I explain to people why they're truly burnt out, the message doesn't resonate because they don't understand that solution is what they need. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense to you. Okay. But anyways, market sophistication, learning this and learning messaging tactics and how to really resonate with my ideal people has truly helped. And it's one of the things we teach in the marketing modules in our inner circle and our Fitbiz Foundations program. So if you are interested in learning how not to be burnt out, and learning what the solution is for feeling overwhelmed, stress, and burnout in your business, go visit my website, kristagurka.com. Go to the work with me page and check it out. I can do, I do one-on-one -on -one calls with people. I do small group trainings and we have a lot of like free resources on there as well. Okay. So understanding where your customers sit in the marketplace, learning how to hit messaging that resonates directly with where they are demonstrating your expertise to build credibility, okay, and trust, and then differentiate yourself from the competitors. Why should someone work with you versus someone else? Okay. So I'll give you the, my coach told me this a while ago. If you wanted to travel from New York to California, there's lots of different ways to get there. Why should someone fly versus drive? All right. And that's basically what differentiating yourself is like. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions about it, shoot me a DM on Instagram. I love chatting with this stuff. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if this is confusing AF for you or if you're like, oh, that makes total sense. And if you liked what we shared and you would review it or like it, subscribe to the podcast, maybe take a screenshot of you listening to it and take two seconds to post on Instagram and tag me, I would really appreciate it. It really does help me get more of this messaging in the hands of more women business owners in our industry so that we can ultimately change the world. Listen, my mission is to transform the landscape, the face of business ownership and boutique healthcare, wellness, and fitness. And I would really appreciate it if you help me do that. So that's all I got for you now. Until next time, my friends, bye for now. Mm -hmm.